It goes without saying that pseudo legendaries are cool, and in terms of generation 1, Dragonite is only behind Mewtwo in terms of base stat total, so you might be thinking, hey, the base stage evolution might be pretty decent, but just sit back, relax, grab yourself a Sodi Pop, and let's just dive into a Dratini solo challenge in Pokemon Yellow. The rules for the run are in the description, and I would say don't judge this little chubby dragon too hard out of the gate, but it's really the antithesis of Dragonite, where Dragonite is almost in the same realm as Mewtwo, Dratini is closer to things like Rattata and Jigglypuff. In fact, this little guy is tied with several Pokemon for the 19th worst base stat total in the entire game. And if you look at the base stats, nothing inspires confidence, but let's just take it for what it is. Let's move on. You do get a pretty good little set of TMs. I don't really want to focus on that now. Instead, I'd rather look at the learn set and focus on that. And the focus of today's video is going to be rap. In the Tentacruel video I did a bit ago, I talked about this move probably a bit too much, but just to kind of consolidate all my thoughts into a few words, Rap is a pretty slow move, and it kind of goes against the idea of beating the game as fast as possible, which is the ultimate goal for me when I do these videos. Tentacruel was a great run. It pushed its way into the top 10 on the merits of just being a good Pokemon, and I can emphatically tell you guys that Dratini's not that guy. A fair warning up front is that this is a very rap heavy playthrough. Things are going to get repetitive. Things are going to be a little inconsistent. And I'll do my best to keep things interesting and not do some extremely boring play by play. But let's kind of go over that Brock preparation. In the early portion of the game, rap is going to be the limiting factor over everything else. And even if you never miss a rap, you simply just can't take on all the trainers in Viridian. But we can jump into that first optional bug catcher to kind of get a feel for how things are going to go. Notice already that I'm softening up their defenses with Leer just to enhance rap's damage because if I don't, I can and I likely will just run out of PP. And at that point, you might as well just restart the run. And I would say that the fact that the very first optional battle takes about 70 seconds of in game time is kind of like the first red flag of how slow rap can be. I'm also going to battle the third overall bug catcher. He only has one metapod as opposed to the second having two. And it's even slower, just metapod harden. I don't need to tell you guys. And we don't really need to take a look at that battle, but instead let's look at that final mandatory trainer in Viridian. Now I'm here a little bit lower of a level than maybe you should be, but it's just a Caterpie. Who cares? But there are two things that I need to say here. Number one, rap is a very cheap move. And if you out speed your opponent that's the one condition here if you outspeed your opponent they just don't get to play the game and number two is that we actually do not outspeed Caterpie here which is a little bit sad what this means is rap in this context is gonna be just a mid move with 85% accuracy it doesn't give me any benefits and Dratini is gonna get slapped around and hurt a lot and ultimately I'm gonna go down to just three health before barely squeaking by and I gotta say that this is a pretty rough start to the playthrough but help is on the way in the form of some light years blackout grinding. Now if you didn't know, I won't touch on this too much. Trainers give 50% more experience compared to wild battles and the most efficient way by far to get early experience is to take out the Diglett, get the experience, then let the Sand True make you faint, black out, and then just rinse and repeat that until you are the level that you need to be. Now something else I have not pointed out up to this point is that Jertini is in that dreaded slow leveling group. I don't really need to elaborate on that, it's pretty bad, and it makes gaining levels, for the lack of a better word, slow. And if I'm being positive, let's be positive for a second, that's always a good thing to be. I will say that if I graded Pokemon in various areas of the game, Jertini would get an A plus plus highest tier grade on its ability to blackout grind. Even at the start with no extra moves wrap, it does enough to outlast Diglett and you can just stall with Leer on the Sand True to just take damage and faint. But at level 10, you get access to Thunder Wave. And since electric types doesn't affect ground types, it makes the text go by a little bit quicker and makes it just that much faster. So here's the ultimate goal before Dratini wraps up this section, if you know what I'm saying. I need to get to roughly about 300 experience from level 13. And at that point, when I actually defeat the Light Years Junior Trainer in a regular battle, it will push me to level 13. And today, that's what I decided it, it felt best for Brock. And I guess that means it's time for the rock solid Pokemon Trainer. As for the strategical analysis, we have Leer. We want to use that to lower the high defenses of the rocks, and we want to use Rap to slowly squeeze the life out of them. Now, there's a fine balance here because Onyx is a brick wall against normal damage, so I opt to go ahead and take about half of my health and damage so that I can set up four Leers on the Geodude. Now, if you want to get real technical about it, 
dropping the Geodude's defense by four stages. It puts Rap's damage into a three to four damage breakpoint, and this lets me wrap it down and do some really solid damage. And remember, this is very important. The opponent does not get to play the game if I outspeed. I'm not gonna repeat that for the whole video, but I will burn it into your head early. As for Onyx, there is a slight little concession here. We only speed tie at level 13, and I kinda went back and forth and weighed the pros and cons, but ultimately I think getting to level 14 with a slow leveling group, it gives you one of the worst Brock splits, and I did not wanna have to do that, so this is what we gotta deal with. Onyx is infinitely more tanky than the Geodude, so even if you put five Leers on it, Rap will only reach a two to three damage range, and this one ultimately just kinda comes down to speed ties. I lose a few, but overall, I actually win most of the speed ties, which means that I can just wrap all day long and Brock can just only look on as the much smaller blue snake chokes out the much bigger rock snake. I get the first badge at a little under 30 minutes and honestly that's a little bit better than what I expected. It's not great, but for what we got to work with, I think that's pretty fine, I guess. And I would love to sit here and tell you guys, hey, this is the hardest part of the game and everything's gonna be easy after that, but our old pal Gertini here, it's gonna be an uphill battle for the entire game. So now we have to talk about Route 3 and mainly it's because of PP problems, I'm sad to say. Remember earlier in Viridian Forest, I could not fight every trainer due to that, but if you wanna get to Mount Moon, the shortest path to get there is you fight four trainers, they have nine total Pokemon, and once again, Leer is going to be your answer. It's going to enhance Rap's damage and kind of inadvertently give you more uses of Rap. You have to be very careful here because if you just willy-nilly use Raps, throwing them out like $1 bills at the strip club, you will run out and you're essentially going to kill the run. But we've seen how the first battle goes. You've seen kind of what I'm talking about with Leer. We've seen that before, but this is a good example. Now, I had a pretty good run here without missing much at all. I didn't get a ton of two-hit Raps, but on the final bug catcher, I'm still going to go down to just three power points left and you can kind of see how a string of bad luck maybe missing a few moves maybe missing some ranges on two hits you could see how that would cause you to either waste a lot of time maybe going back to heal or even worse it would force you to deplete all of your leers and thunder waves get to struggle it would cost you too much time to even want to continue the run Let's talk about Mount Moon, and I tried lots of approaches for this, but I think the best is just to go ahead and pick up Water Gun. You can give Rap a little bit of a rest, and I think that's the best play. I tried using only Rap, picking up the Aether near the Mega Punch Grunt, but we've already kind of seen that relying on only Rap for even medium stretches of the game is just a little bit too risky, and I think this is just vastly superior. Now there are some extra battles here. There's the Super Nerd, there is the Double Grass Lass, and having Water Gun does give us easy access to that sweet hiker experience. Jesse and James at the end of the route, and it's a little bit of a struggle, not gonna lie to you guys, and this is where you're gonna start seeing me kind of pepper in Thunder Wave just a little bit. Now, it goes without saying, we've said this before, outspeeding is the key for a rap focused Pokemon, and I want you to watch the finish to this battle. I get poisoned, I'm in the yellow health, and my only chance to win is to not take any more damage, so I go to lock down the rest of the battle with rap, but each and every turn, I deal damage, I'm just taking poison damage right back. And this is a pretty tight race, but true to its name, Raplet gets the job done. It outlasts the coughing deep in the red health, and that will get me to level 18. It might actually surprise you that I'm gonna go directly to Misty. And this is actually a pretty solid matchup on paper. Dragon topping, Misty won't go for water moves, but don't underestimate how bad Rap can be and how frail Dratini is. Thunder Wave is the strat here, but an early crit tackle sets the tone. And I just, I wanna go for a single Leer because I know X Defend is inevitable. And I just want you guys to look no further than this little sequence coming up as to why Rap is not a good move. I'm gonna miss not one time, not two times, not three times, but I'm gonna get a massive four rap misses all in a row. And it's 85% accurate, by the way. And to say that this is unlucky, that's an understatement. Now this is pretty wild. And by the time I finally get things under control, I'm only at 19 health. And we haven't even talked about the Starmie yet. So there is a slight hope here. Thunder Wave into Rap theoretically can win any battle, but Starmie follows Staryu's lead and it immediately crits me, but Jotini didn't hear no bell. It survives with just two HP and it's time to see what Rap 
Raplet's actually made out of. Rap is doing its thing, but I'm just kind of watching the battle with bated breath because I know that the dream could end at any moment. And eventually it does. Jotini misses the rap and that's a reset, or at least it would be if Starmie didn't miss its turn due to paralysis and that lets Jotini keep the choke hold on and eventually when the dust settles, the second badge is mine. I must say that this fight was a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. You got that frustration of just missing moves an improbable amount of time. Then you get that second chance. You still got a win condition. And then I missed that rap at the end. It was just, it was a wild battle. And I think that this might actually be one of my favorite battles that I've ever done in a solo run. But the real important thing here is we got that extra Misty experience and we get access to Bubble Beam. And let's just go straight into rival number two. Unfortunately, we do not have over 33 speed to outspeed the bird, but this is not red and blue, and Spiro is not nearly as threatening as Pidgeotto. Now, once again, bad luck strikes. I take not one, but two back-to-back -back crits, and that puts me in a bad position right up front. Now, generally in this situation, you just don't care. You get growled, who cares? I have Bubble Beam, but I do get by here, but it's not really that clean. I do have Bubble Beam for Sanchu, and this run was, it was really weird. Now, we've already had that Misty battle, and look at this next dramatic moment. Rattata has quick attack, meaning that Rap is not guaranteed. Now naturally, it goes for it immediately, and I get crit for the third time in the battle, and I go down to just 4 HP, but I'm still able to get past. Now thankfully, Eevee does not have quick attack at this level, and at this point, it's just a matter if I can just continually get that 85% dice roll to connect. I do, and Jertini takes another really close battle. Now at the end, I do hit level 20, and as much as I would love to talk about another tent situation, there's more pressing matters. We learned agility, and now I need to pivot this discussion to give a complete rundown of Dratini and its strategies, talk about agility, and this is all important to cover now so I don't have to continually repeat myself as the video goes on. You guys already know, Nugget Bridge, most mandatory trainers in the game. It's a cluster, some might say, and Dratini does fine here, but like we've already kind of seen in the run, it's it's not really that fast. We also know about rap, we know the implications if you outspeed your opponent, and we just dabbled in Thunder Wave a little bit just to ensure that we outspeed, but agility is just a huge upgrade over Thunder Wave. Now, rather than manually using Thunder Wave on each individual opponent that outspeeds us, instead we can now use agility on ourselves, increase our own speed, and and that will enable Rap to do what the good lord intended. Now we'll come back to some more thoughts about agility in a second, but I want to focus on this battle right here because this is going to be Dratini's best strategy and you're going to see this a ton in the run. Now and when you're doing an optimized run like this, I already have a really good idea for damage ranges and you simply just want to wrap an opponent down to the health range where something like Bubble Beam or whatever move the situation calls for will knock it out and then you can preserve your health and I just can't stress this enough that this is the main theme of the run. I'm also just, we're not going to show it, but I'm going to pick up two optional battles. There's an Onyx Hiker, there's another Hiker that has like three Geodudes, but we have water moves, and I'm going to swap down right before Vermilion with the Triple Pidgey Trainer just to give you some more visuals on how the Wrap Chip strategy goes. And let me talk about Agility just a little bit more. I've been on record and I still believe this, I think Agility is by far the worst badge boosting move in the game. 99% of the time Agility, it's found on like Pokemon that are already really fast like Rapidash, Articuno, so the speed part is useless. And since it's a two-stage boosting move, you only get a tiny little three badge boost out of it. But I found it really interesting that Dratini is an exception because it's not fast at all. It only has a measly 50 base speed. It levels up slow. And the synergy with agility combined with rap, it makes it absolutely perfect on this Pokemon. Down on the SSN, the first thing I do is take on this puppy gentleman right here. That's what we're calling him now. He has two Growlithe. And then I'm going to take a quick little dip downstairs. I'm going to pick up that Max Potion and an Aether here for free. Now, I found myself having to heal a lot. And in the worst case scenario, I can just sell this for more money later. And the Aethers really do help in some of the optional grinding parts later. Next, we're going to pick up Body Slam. It's a very welcome addition to the learn set. And the last optional thing I'm going to do is uh, fight the gentleman to get the rare candy. And then it's time for rival number three. This is a really refreshing battle because it's really easy, whereas all the other major fights up to this point, they've been a little bit of a slog. The significance of Body Slam and its 85 base power is that it's actually stronger than a five turn wrap 
which isn't even guaranteed. Now this finally allows us to roll over lesser opponents without worry, and you can see the difference. It's night and day from this fight from rival number two. But let's not celebrate yet. Dratini has not ascended or anything like that, and I want to spend just a little, like a few seconds talking about Surge before we jump into it. Now this is the first battle where I'm going to need to use agility, and I actually need to use two agilities to maintain higher speed. So let's hop into that and see why I had to give a little bit of a preamble before we even got into the fight. Like I said earlier, I do need to set up agility, but Surge immediately kicks my head off with a mega kick crit. I don't get to play the game. That's our first reset of the run. And you can see why this, this could be a little bit of a problem. On the second attempt, Surge goes for an early X speed. And I want you to look at the speed here. With an X speed, Dratini needs two agilities. That's why I need two. We'll talk more about that in a second, but I do tank a mega punch. It does a ton of damage. But at this point, we already have the speed and you already know what time it's for. It's time for rap. Later in the fight, I do miss and you think the fight might be over, but Surge just goes for a growl. It lowers my damage, but at this point, the end of the fight's inevitable. And let's go back to that two agility talk. We've covered this a lot. If you outspeed, the opponent does not get to take a turn, but that only goes for the Pokemon. Now, the trainer can actually still use moves. And in this case, if you only use one agility and you're wrapping down the opponent, you've already taken some damage, Surge can and inevitably will use an X speed, which means that when you get done with that wrap, the Raichu will outspeed you and get off another move, which means if you took damage early in the fight, it will likely just knock you out. And I'm saying all that to tell you that this fight is not really like black and white, cut and dry, really easy like you would expect Surge to be. It actually had a little bit of nuance in it. And I gotta say that I'm really lucky that I only made it through this fight with a single reset because this is pretty tough for Jatini. After the fight, it's normally time for split data, but I don't have any for you this week. You, you see the time, we're at like a close to an hour, 24 minutes. It means the run's a little bit slow. There's a ton of run left. So Dratini comparisons and split data, I just don't think they're needed. And let's talk about Thunderbolt just for a second. It's a great move and it gives you great coverage. Some of the best in the game, but when you rely on rap and you have a high need for agility to fuel those strategies, I essentially only have two move slots left and Dratini suffers from the too many move syndrome. Body slam is just too good in neutral situations and bubble beam is necessary for the boomer hacker. And if you really just sit down and think about it, from this point all the way up to the last gym of the game, Thunderbolt's really only useful for the slow pokes in rock tunnel and they're not really that bad anyway. It's pretty good on the rival and yellow version, but the whole, what I'm trying to say here is that we're holding off on Thunderbolt and rock tunnel, not that bad. Let's skip over to Celadon. Next is the Rocket Hideout, and Dratini wants every penny that it can get today, so I will get all the high money items. I am going to pick up PP ups today, a couple of them, and I'm actually going to use one on Rap because there are just some points in the game where 20 power points just isn't enough, if you can believe that. To get even more of that sweet cash, I'm going to go down to the double edge area for that hidden nugget just to squeeze all the money I can get, and that's basically all you need to know for this part. Giovanni isn't awful, but it's not great either. Persian lowers about 45 of my stats, and it just takes a little bit to get down but there's not really any risk here. As for the Celadon buy, there's a few things going on, but the main things are extra super potions, and those were very important to route in. I get a Poke Doll for Mimic later, and I'm going to get Ice Beam to use now in the learn set. It's also a pretty big thing. Now, Ice doesn't answer all of the problems, but it does come in handy immediately, and it's pretty strong. Outside of that, five calciums are what I went for for vitamins, just to kind of hit a little bit harder, and you would think that maybe Carbos would be useful here, but with only 50 base speed and agility on the learn set, they just really didn't do much. Erica is next and my brain kind of shut off here. After doing several runs, the rap chip strategy was just etched into my brain and I didn't think about her only going for non-grass move. So for most of the battle, I'm going to do that. And then I remembered, hey, she's only going to go for moves like acid and it can just be much faster if I just go for straight ice beam. Now I do end up tanking a bunch of acids. I'd get kind of low, but I went much faster than a full rap strategy would do. And getting this gym out of the way feels pretty good. We get some extra experience. Next up is Pokemon Tower. Now I'm skipping over the rival and once again I'm going to be talking about the Gastlys. I feel like I bring this up probably a little bit too much, but I think after doing these runs for so many years, that Pokemon basically fall into two categories. Now you can either one shot the Gastlys and they're no problem at all, or you just really can't. And that generally has implications for Agatha later. Here you're going to see a pretty clean battle. Not much happens. I even get a freeze on the first Pokemon. But outside of Dratini's low stats and the reliance on rap, for me I think the thing that kills this run is Dratini 
Tini not having direct answers for ghost types, whether it be something like Psychic, Earthquake, or Dig, or even like a reliable status move. But that's not really going to hurt us until a lot later down the road, but this is a prelude to the single biggest downfall of the run, so just keep that in your head. It has been a while, but now it's finally time for some more extra training. Now, Dratini has done a great job to this point outside of grinding for the first gym, and it just uses the tools that it has to get through the game. I did pick up a few extra battles to hit 18 for Misty, 25 on Surge, but all things considered, it's been pretty smooth and pretty minimal, but we are approaching that area of the game where praying and rapping just isn't enough on its own. This is a pretty big grinding segment with the Bikers on Cycling Road, and it's became one of my favorite training spots these days. Now I'm not going to show the battles in detail because they, they're not great and they're not really interesting. This is the specific reason why you need a lot of extra super potions from the Celadon buy. And this is where the ethers from earlier are going to help out a lot. So you can just do things like go straight Ice Beam or you can just wrap things into a range for Ice Beam without having to heal or use weaker moves. In my first blind run I had several resets in parts like this because I was doing my typical route where I would only buy like four super potions and it just wasn't enough. You either reset several times or you just had to fly back back to heal and you ended up losing a ton of time but Trishini pushes through I get some really valuable experience and that's really the important thing here after I wrap up the Safari Zone, which we don't really need to talk about, I'm going to take on Koga's Gym now. I'm not going to train any extra or use any candies, and you might be thinking, hey, even really good Pokemon need levels for yellow version Koga sometimes, and you're not wrong, but we're going to be fighting this battle at level 37, and guys, I'm not here to convert you to the Church of Rap, but I will say, let's just dive into it and see what this under-leveled chubby little snake can do here. The first thing, the important thing, is that I outspeed the first Venonat. I would love to set up an agility, but it's just too risky with Sleep Powder on its learn set, so you know the strategy here. Wrap, wrap, and some more wrap until I can finish it off and we can move on. On the next Venonat is where I need to set up agility. I'll have to tank some moves, but I get a little bit greedy here. This is going to happen a couple of times in this video. I want two agility just to get another badge boost, and when you combine that with some damage and a supersonic, Dratini's realness kind of shines through for the second reset of the run. So we know how things go go by now. Rap, hope you don't miss, and let's just skip over that first Venonat and ultimately what the battles pretty much always come down to is that little pocket where you need to set up agility and if you can pull it off successfully. I get it here and I go for Rap. That's my analysis. Can you rely on the 85% accuracy enough to get past battles you otherwise have no business getting through? And the answer here is yes. I think this fight right here is exhibit number one showing how dangerous Jatini can actually be in a vacuum. And even if I got unlucky and I just reset here several times, it's still much faster and wouldn't affect the overall final score as much as grinding like an extra six levels would. But let's just take this victory. We get that speed badge boost. Let's move on. Next up is Sylph Co. And just like with Cyclone Road, there will be just a little bit of extra battles and it always starts with the 10th floor. The rare candy is great. I won't say no to a Carbos with 50 base speed. So this is a pretty lucrative floor to visit. Outside of that, let me just quickly hit on the extra trainers here. I'm going to take the scientist on the 5th floor warp that you can find on the 9th floor. There's another scientist on the 5th floor near the protein. There's the double radicate hypno grunt on the 3rd floor. And I'm going to finish up the training with the 3rd floor scientist near the rival 5 warp. Now this is where I felt really comfortable and this sets us up to just dive straight into rival number five. So anyway, I started rapping, but I will need to set up an agility eventually, but I'm, I'm scared of Sand Slash. Eventually, I do go for it, and I get slashed, which does a lot of damage. Dratini's hurt, but now I got the speed, so now it's just a matter if I can get it into range, use an Ice Beam, and let's talk about Cloister. This is the one spot in the game, and I'm going to repeat this a couple of times, that Thunderbolt would be fantastic. And some of you might not agree with the route that I decided to go here, which is, it's fine. What I'm going to do here is a good old-fashioned rap strategy. Who would have believe that. It's slow, but it gets the job done. And I've already talked about Dratini suffering from the too many move syndrome and Ice Beam. It just helped in more spots than Thunderbolt, in my opinion. Thunderbolt literally just helps on the rival fights. 
and it's just not worth it because you're gonna see I'm still gonna make it by just fine. Magneton is whatever, rap, 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 you know the drill, but when it comes to Kadabra, Jatini's had enough, it flexes its muscles, and I can actually just one shot it with Body Slam, so how does it feel to be like the one Pokemon where Jatini doesn't have to use rap on it? And I think this gave me like a little bit too much confidence, so I decided, hey, I'm just gonna go straight Body Slam on Flareon. I end up taking a Sand Attack, and I don't do as much damage as I thought I would do, so I was wondering if I made a mistake here, but Dratini's got my back, it gets a crit, and we get a first try victory. After getting Mimic, I head straight to Sabrina, and let me talk about this fight because I made a huge concession. If I got flashed on turn one by Abra, I was just gonna reset. That was my strategy for this run. The idea is that maybe if it misses flash or it uses an X defend, I'll get my agility in, and that's pretty much the battle over. And here I'm gonna get a very first try X defend on turn one, and I want you to comment down below how you think the rest of the strategy of this battle is gonna play out. Now things go really well, and at the end, Alakazam is going down, and remember, just like on Surge, trainers can use items when they're being wrapped and I didn't even think about the X defend on the Alakazam it didn't even cross my mind I get it into a range where I think body slam will finish it off but it doesn't and the computer it's salivating at the chance to cheat a little bit so it goes for a psychic crit but for the 10th time in the run Jertini barely hangs on with 4 HP like a beast and I'm able to finish off the battle after that after those intense battles, it's time for a brisk swim down to Cinnabar, and this is yet another section with some extra battles. I'm picking them up in Pokemon Mansion for the same reason that I would pick up cycling road training. Just like that part of the game, the mansion segment takes place in like a little bit of a lull in the game where you're going to do some busy work and then dig out to a center anyway, and wasting PP and resources here are better than waiting later like to train in Blaine's Gym or something like that when a major encounter is coming up, for example. I essentially pick up all the trainers here. Outside of there's like a nine tails trainer at the top I skip but my level is just a little bit too low here and I get that dreaded yellow version radicate wild encounter here I'm too slow to run away so I just can't escape I take damage and this one to me it always feels like a horror movie I'm trying to get away from the bad guy and in most runs I will route just to avoid this kind of situation like the plague but I do live another day Jertini survives in Blaine's Gym I'll be picking up one trainer battle just one more is all I need just a little extra experience going towards the end of the game I went with the single Ponyta Burglar, and this isn't related to anything at all, but I've never really talked about the Burglar Trainer class. They're really unique in the fact that you actually have to talk to them to battle them as opposed to locking eyes and them walking up to you initiating the battle like all the other trainers. I think that's pretty cool. Why am I bringing it up? I don't know. Something else that's cool is the existential crisis of whether TM28 is actually Doomstoner, brother, or not. But some questions, my friends, are best left unanswered. As for Blaine, this one's a little bit of a troll. Nine tails with Confuse Ray or some damage while I get an agility set up can be an issue, but here I make the call to go for double agility once again. I really, in my head, I really thought the extra badge boost and additional damage to wrap would help out, but it generally just opened me up to more damage, and at this point, I think we know how the battle's gonna go. It's time for the game of roulette. Let's see if we can get that 85% chance to hit over and over, and this one looks really solid, but as much luck as Dratini has had for the run, it's bound to run out sometime. Now Arcanine, it's slow, it's steady, it's going down, and Blaine ends up using just enough super potions to buy him enough time for me to eventually miss the wrap, and he crits on takedown, and that's going to give us the third overall reset for the run. I'm going to have a fourth reset here just because Ninetales won't cooperate and it just solos me, and on the next attempt, it's almost the same exact thing. Ninetales itself takes me down to just seven hit points, and with a very long battle left ahead with Rapidash and Arcanine, you would think that this one would almost assuredly be over but just like the rest of the game there are two parameters you have to ask yourself one do you outspeed two do you have rap if the answer to those questions are yes then you have a chance and I'm actually just gonna run the rest of this battle and get a victory now while this one plays out I'm gonna make a decision right now to skip past some of the resets and future battles because they're all the same I'll miss rap I'll take too much damage or I need to set up agility and I'll take too much damage there and the point is that all the resets are virtually identical they're not really that compelling compelling to go over. I think cutting into a battle on the final attempt, maybe stating how many resets I had with the understanding that I probably missed a wrap or I just could not get the agility set up to go right, I think that'll feel the best for everyone, but that's going to be seven badges down. 
Going into the eighth gym, I'm battling all the trainers here as well. More extra battles, I need them. It's not really that bad, we don't need to look at them, but when I leave the gym to go reset the trainers to get to Giovanni, I'm gonna take this time right here to go pick up the power plant candy. Now this does take a couple of minutes of in-game time, but remember, I'm in the slow leveling group, and this is much faster than it would take to battle a bunch of extra trainers to get an extra level. But now let's take a look at Giovanni. So the resets have jumped up. We have two extra resets here at this point, and this fight is difficult because it's it's front loaded with a lot of speed. You can get sand attacked early, a uh, fissure can connect on the first turn, but in this specific case, we're gonna see a guard spec early. Now, I learned my lesson here. I'm only gonna set up one single agility, not take any chances and get through the fight. Persian is what I found to be really annoying in the fight. If you miss a single wrap, it can just go for double team and it can just start to snowball you into a pit of depression. And just for clarification, an early sand attack was the cause of my first reset and Persian setting up too many double teams was the second. If you can get past this point, the rest of the fight is weak to ice beam, but you cannot one shot. So you have to chip and you have to get to that range of health. I think that's the best approach. And it's not really that bad, at least not on the Nidos. They hit really hard. So obviously you would rather not miss and when we eventually make it to the needle king i do miss and even a very simple double kick probably the best case scenario still does a ton of damage since my defense is lowered i'm still at half health i take it out so now let's talk about daddy right on ice beam does not one shot and rap takes a literal day to get it within range so i rolled the dice here if it could go for like a guard spec fury attack a horn drill or even miss a rock slide that would be great so i play the odds i go straight ice beam and then i get that patented guard spec by Silco, and that gives me the green light to end the battle and finish off the gym portion of the game. Jumping directly into rival number six, there's no resets here and it's virtually identical to the last rival fight. Even down to me being scared to use agility on Sand Slash, but eventually I do. And this time it just goes for Poison Sting. It doesn't really do any damage, so that's great. And now let's spin the wheel a little bit. Executor is the same, chip it down, finish it off with Ice Beam. And I'll talk about Cloyster once again. I repeat, Thunderbolt would be great here, but I need to hang on to Body Slam for reasons that I'll get into after the battle. But with Rap, all things are possible. Got that down, I take it out, let's move on. Now the cool thing about Magneton is that it's not gonna use any resisted electric moves due to the dragon topping, so I actually take this opportunity to badge boost a couple more times, and what that's gonna do is put me in a position just to one-shot the Kadabra with Body Slam, and at that point, I'm healthy enough at the end to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Flareon with only Body Slam, and I take the battle. Now, if I was able to go straight to the league and get through it, Jotini would have a pretty solid shot at maybe being like a D tier Pokemon, but that's not the reality of the situation. Now, we'll talk about Lorelai when we get into that battle, since we are weak to ice, but like I touched on earlier, it's the Ghost and Agatha that's the real issue. Now, I'm gonna have to train in Victory Road a lot. I fight so many trainers, it's actually easier to tell you guys what I don't fight. I'm gonna pick up the optional rare candy, and the only battles that I skip are gonna be the, the cool trainers near the final boulder puzzle that leads with an executor and has a cloister and then I'm going to skip the cool trainer that leads with a parasect and has a dugong. After I get done with the grass cool trainer now is the time I'm going to learn thunderbolt for Lorelai and notice that I had hyper beam. Having body slam and hyper beam for this section really made the training go by pretty quick and I would love to fit hyper beam into that final learn set but it just, it just doesn't fit but it came in handy here. So after I finish up the triple water cool trainer here I'm, I'm level 53. I'm going to use 10 of my 12 rare candies. I'm going to get to level 63 and now we can just dive into Lorelai and just the league in general. Not to alarm anyone, but the resets are gonna jump up to 12 here, and that's mainly just because of how punishing missing a wrap can be in this fight. Now, I have to say that I made a slight mistake in some of the resets here, and originally, I practiced this fight at level 53. I was pretty comfortable with that, but as you can probably guess, it just made the fight harder. The level 63 strat was a little new to me overall, but you know the strategy here. Chip the Pokemon down, use Thunderbolt when they're in range, no surprise to anybody. Now, I want you to notice that I'm wrapping the Cloyster, and in a perfect 
perfect world you would just one shot it with Thunderbolt, but the one shot here is a range. It's not really a bad range, but I found myself missing that range too much because a lot of my resets I was like, well I'll just go straight Thunderbolt, I miss the range, I take damage, and that was just pretty much a reset right there. So literally all you have to do is use wrap on it, chip it down like just 7 health, and then it'll be 100% knockout from there. On Slowbro I take a risk that I wouldn't even know it was a risk until after I was looking at some stuff after the run was over, but I'm going to set up agility. It's not necessary, and this is going to open you up to tank a psychic or maybe even having your special dropped, and that would be really bad, but like I said earlier, I was used to this fight at level 53, but when you're this level, you actually just naturally outspeed the Jinx, so going straight Thunderbolt is likely the better call here, and you can just outspeed, wrap down the Jinx, and eventually when you make it to the end of this battle, Lapras is the worst part of the fight. The act of just wrapping this thing down from all the way down to a range where Thunderbolt can knock it out, it was nerve-wracking. You're just sitting there waiting to see if you'll miss and if it's going to hit a blizzard. It makes you really nervous because this fight takes a while and you just you want you want all your runs to go well. But you can see here I get through. I reset a little bit more than I would like. It kind of surprised me that I reset this much, but let's not dwell on it. Instead, let's go straight into Bruno. At this point, the reason I have Ice Beam is to make this fight a little bit quicker. I could already have Mimic on the learn set to get Amnesia in the lower life fight, make that a little bit more consistent. But I find if I just kept Ice Beam, I can just spam it on this fight. I'm going to replace it after so it just makes the most sense just to spam it here deplete all the pp since it's going to go away anyway and the machamp at the end it always has that like surprise factor but i just get the freeze here and that's really all there is to say Ice Beam has been replaced with Mimic, and this fight right here is the reason that I'm level 65. I would say this fight is the reason why I had to get an additional like 10 levels. But the concept for this fight on paper is to take Substitute and pray that I make it through the fight. And in defense of Dratini, I do think it could probably beat the game like an hour faster if Agatha wasn't a thing. This is the fight that I planned the entire run around, and this is the reason why pretty much all the extra trainers exist. But to stick to the battle plan, I want to take Substitute, get Agility up, and hope that my Thunderbolt 3-shot range is hit, but I got pretty lucky in this battle. It started off with a swap into Golbat, it gave me a free Agility setup, and from there I was able to take Substitute, and generally just kind of go through the motions and not really have any trouble. I was really patient later in the fight, Agatha starts swapping back and forth between Arbok and Haunter, and it gives me enough free turns to not really break a sweat. Now eventually she's going to swap into that final Gengar, and the heat's going to turn up a little bit, because it uses Psychic and it breaks my Substitute, but at that point, she's already too low. And when I take that Gengar out, Arbox, all that's left in the back, I can use Rap, I can do whatever I really want to do, and I actually first try a trainer that I was convinced that was going to give me a ton of resets, but I'm not going to question it, especially after we had the Lorelei Troubles. So this was pretty big for the run, I was really happy with this result, it's about as good as it could have ever went. Up next is Lance, and this is an extremely easy fight. I replaced Mimic with Blizzard, I slapped a PP up on it, and that's really all you need to know. I didn't use Rap on Agatha's Ghost because they are immune to it, but I'm not going to use Rap on Lance's Pokemon because Dratini can just roll over him, and I think this is probably maybe the easiest battle in the entire run. It doesn't really need much elaboration, and that's going to take us straight into the final battle of the game. The beginning of the fight is more or less about the same, except Sand Slash is now scarier than ever with Earthquake, but I do need an agility, so I just have to eat a move and just trust in the route. I did use my final candy here so I don't level up, and at this range, Blizzard can just one-shot without the need for wrap, so that's great. But when I get to Alakazam, I'm immediately going to miss my very first wrap, and I'm going to get a psychic crit and that's gonna get me another reset, so that's cool. On the next attempt, things go how they're supposed to. I ate a move, but this time my rap strategy stays true. I get through without any additional damage, about the best spot you could be in. On Executor, I have a guaranteed two-shot range with Blizzard, and I'm just daring the computer to go for Hypnosis. It doesn't, I get the two-shot, and now it's time for Magneton. I said this last time, but the dragon typing will force it to only use Supersonic or Swift, so I take this time to set up a couple more agilities. I take some very minor damage, and when we get to the cloister, it's a really it's about as simple as it gets. 
one Thunderbolt, it goes down. And this right here is how easy the Cloister could have been the whole game if Dratini had five move slots. But at the end, this fight gets a little bit scary. My defense is lowered. I'm pretty low on health and a quick attack is a factor here. So I decide to go for rap because how else am I gonna end this run? If the computer uses quick attack, so be it. What can you do about it? And it just feels so thematic to let the final part of the game come down to a roll of the dice between Dratini and the quick attack. And our little chubby blue snake comes out on top and that's the end end of the run. Dratini finishes the run with a 4 hour, 10 minute, and 49 second time, and it's not really great. In fact, the tier list should be going by now. It's going to be a minute before it even gets down to where Dratini's placed. Now, this run wasn't good, but honestly, not quite as bad as I thought it would be. Rap is a little bit slow, but I was actually impressed with how I could get past most challenges at a low level. And like I said earlier, if Agatha wasn't a factor, I think I could probably do Lorelight 53 and just finish the whole game at, in the 50s. And I could just wrap my way to victory much earlier but that's not the reality and this is the run that we're stuck with 13 resets really wasn't that bad and i thought laura would be much easier as well she was in practice and i even went up to 63 but you never know what's going to happen when you actually try to record your final run so in this run laura was a problem agatha we first tried her but i think this was a fun learning experience i think i learned a lot about pokemon from playing this game as weird as that sounds i do so many runs i've played this game for so many years but playing all the pokemon and seeing all the different styles it just kind of it teaches you a lot of different ways to approach the game and i think that's always pretty cool as the tier list is finally kind of getting by here we'll eventually get to jatini it's going to be sporting a solid 56.75 out of 100 which puts it overall at 55th place out of 71 runs that i've done i actually think i'm up to 72 or 73 runs at this point but i'm lazy and i still haven't put up some streams on here but it's pretty much the top of the f tier that's you know it is what it is i think when you combine a low stat total pokemon that can't deal with Agatha and its best strategy is rap. I think it's going to be kind of slow just innately, but it's not the worst Pokemon. And I actually, like I said earlier, I actually really enjoyed learning how to play this Pokemon and trim time off of this run. But that's going to be about it for me. Like the video, leave a comment down below and subscribe if you are new. And a special shout out to my channel members and Patreons. The support means a lot. And if you made it this far into the video, I really do appreciate it. And I guess I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.